Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com and welcome back to the video trading alert that we do here each and every night on the membership side of our blog. So just real quick before we get into the actual trades that we made for today, I wanted to give you guys a heads up. I'm hopefully cr crossing my fingers going to be launching the podcast before the end of this month. It's been a huge undertaking. We've got five episodes already published. We've got a lot that are still working with audio and all that stuff, kind of splicing everything together. So we should, by the time that we actually launch, have about 10 to 15 podcasts that are ready to go. And the first five obviously will come out on the first day. That way you guys can go through a bunch of them and see if you guys like it. But we've got this whole new podcast page where it's all intuitive. You can just click right through all the different podcasts right from one page. You don't have to click on different shows, obviously. And we'll, we'll have show notes where there's links and, and tutorials and videos and stuff like that and guests that we have on. We'll have all their information in like actual blog posts. But as far as actually listening to the podcast, you'll be able to grab it on iTunes and SoundCloud and Stitcher and everything else that you're used to grabbing on. So very, very happy uh, and excited to get this off the ground. I think it's going to be just a huge, uh, a huge content generating system for us and the ability to connect with you guys. So if you are interested in possibly being on the podcast and you've got an interesting story or how you came up in trading or how you've progressed, I'd love to hear about it because I'm definitely looking to interview people that are just like you. So traders that have either started trading or been trading for a while and just kind of help grow this, this area of the market, just help start and continue to grow this dialogue with options trading and, and figuring out how to make smarter trades. And that's what we're going to be all about. So podcast launching before the end of the month. So be on the lookout for that. Very, very excited for it. All right. So as far as the trades that we have uh, for today, we had two new opening orders. Uh, good trades. I like these trades. One, a big calendar in CMG after earnings. And then we did have a decent amount of closing trades, just some of those uh, weeklies that were kind of rolling off. So I want to go over the closing trades first, and I'm going to start with IWM. So IWM, we've actually traded really successful this year, and I feel like we should be trading just IWM as, as much as we traded it and how successful we've been trading it. But at the bottom of the market, just a couple days ago when things were low, we went ahead and sold a put spread well below the market, the 101.99 put spread. And it's now decayed you know, more than half of its value that we sold it. So we sold it at about 40 cents. For each of these, it's gone back down to about 18 cents. So there's no use in holding it. We've you know, kind of hit our, our target in that about 50% of max gain or over that. And so we made a nice $66 profit in that. When I go to the chart of IWM, I mean, we had two things that worked perfectly in our favor, right? The market went up, which was great, and implied volatility dropped. And both of those right now contributed to such a fast gain in this spread. And so between now and expiration, which is all the way out in November, all we're going to get is another 18 cents in premium. And that's mostly just a lot of time value built into this, this spread. So you're not going to see it decay as much because we've got so much time, it's going to decay maybe one or two cents a day depending on where the market goes. So at this point, it's not worth holding. We just want to go ahead and get out of that trade, take our profit. All right, our Apple earnings trade was a pretty decent trade. I like the trade, wish we could have held on to it a little longer. Uh, should we held on to it all throughout the day, would have you know fully realized its profit potential. But we were able to close out and buy back our three iron condors in the Apple weeklies. These are the front month contracts. Just as a heads up, these OC4, whenever we send out an alert that says OC4, OC2, whatever, that is the fourth week in October. So just be cognizant of that. That's how the exchanges look at it. They look at it NOV2, NOV3, OC4, OC3. That's the fourth week in October. So it happens to be the weekly contracts that expired this week. Went ahead and bought back that Apple earnings trade. Apple did rally after earnings, but did not go beyond the one standard deviation that we had set up this trade at. And so we bought this all these spreads back for about a 15 cent gain across the board uh, on each of these, a 15 cent, I'm sorry, 15 cent debit across the board. So we took in a nice, again, $60 profit on Apple. So same thing happened with Apple as IWM. And let me see if I can, uh, I'm clicking too fast here. Uh, with Apple, the stock did make a huge move higher. So it did trade up about two and a half percent today. You can see that big gap in earnings as it had better than expected earnings and guidance. But just look how quickly implied volatility has dropped after this earnings announcement. So you can see that that's 
really the driving force here behind why these val the value of these options decayed so fast. And so this is what really you know kind of irks me about earnings trades with guys that try to email me and people on the website. They say, you know, Kirk, why don't you just buy a strangle, right? Like and go long an option on the put side and long an option on the call side. Well, even if you were right, and even if you thought that the, you know, Apple is going to move higher. And even if it did move higher and it gapped higher, you know, a couple dollars in your favor, you'd still end up losing long term because of this implied volatility drop. So you're paying for that premium in advance. And then after the earnings event, that premium gets sucked out of the value of the options. And now you're just left with hopefully Apple makes a big, big, big move uh, that's kind of beyond that expected move. Something like Netflix that's, you know, very rare to have such a huge move. Um, after earnings. So Apple was a good trade. Again, got out of it early in the day. Could have actually made all of that, you know, most of that money back, uh, but that's okay. Same thing with uh, MCD. So we did buy back our one McDonald's earnings trade, and that was the strangle that we had. We had the 93 call and the 89 put. McDonald's opened down a little bit lower, had bad earnings. We were able to buy back for a 35 cent debit uh, and take in a nice little profit on a one lot strangle. Again, just keeping these things small of $37. We look at MCD. Again, the stock opened a little bit lower, kind of rallied up towards the end of the day and, and ended up closing a little bit higher uh, than it's open. But again, you can see implied volatility just absolutely crushed in McDonald's uh, and still remains pretty high. It's still above the 51st percentile, but since these are weeklies, we don't want to run that risk of just running up to the, the last moment here uh, near expiration. So it was a good trade. We made a little bit of money, close it out, and move on to the next one. It's very small lot trade. All right, and then the last one that we closed out of, this one's really interesting and I wish I'm biting myself right now because I wish I would have waited all the way to the end of the day, but you just never know what's going to happen with the VIX if it's going to go down or up or whatever the case is. But uh, in the middle of the day, kind of in the middle of the morning, the VIX was down near 17. And so we just decided to go ahead and close this out because we did have other VIX positions that we have behind it. So we've got a lot of November VIX positions that will kind of overshadow this loss and then some. So we'll definitely make money as long as the VIX stays low. And we decided to go ahead and buy back our five vertical spreads in the VIX, the 17, 18 call spread for about $36. So we kind of separated out in, in orders and it was about $36, 36 and a half. So we did lose 75 on this particular trade. But what's interesting about the VIX uh, and just generally what happened is that you'll notice how quickly the VIX has recovered down to the 16 range. I mean, it's only taken four or five days for it to go from 16 to 30 and only four days to go from 30 to 16. And so and I've said this time and time again, I'm just going to keep harping on this. When the markets become irrational like this, it is only a matter of time before they become more stable. And as quickly as the VIX rallied, it completely got crushed back down. Right, and you see this across the board with a lot of securities. I'm I'm trying to think of one uh, right now that that pretty much recovered all of its losses um, in just a matter of days. I think it was was it UPS? No, it's not UPS. So sorry, hold on. Kind of just uh, bear with me here. No, it wasn't USO. Uh, Anyways, I I know it was a, a stock out there that just had absolutely been annihilated. Um, and has seemingly recovered practically all of its, you know, of its of its trade in just a couple of days. Was it Yahoo? No, we tried to get into Yahoo, but it wasn't Yahoo. I can't find it right now. But you know, a stock that you know was down, you know, 10, 15 percent, and then now is up 10, 15 percent. And so, a matter of five or eight trading days, this thing has gone almost 30 percent round trip. Almost 15% down, 15% up in the matter of you know like five to eight trading days, and it just goes to show you that the markets are completely random, completely cyclical. I bet you no one expected the the VIX to come down as quickly, and I bet you no one expected uh, the market to rally as strong as it did over the last couple of days, with the S and P practically wiping out a lot of the losses that it had uh, towards the end of October expiration. So we'll see where things go. Uh, from here that might kind of settle into a little bit of a range. We need to hold this level that we're at right now in the S&P uh, before things get really, really bullish. Uh, but again, the markets are, are very, very cyclical and always surprising, which is why we love them. 
The two opening trades that we had today, one was in OIH. So if most of you noticed with the email alerts, we now added a section where I'm adding a couple comments about the trade. So just a couple quick remarks, if there are any, for the trade. With OIH, one of the comments that I added was that this is a trade to add some negative delta to our portfolio. So in the case of OIH, we went ahead and sold the 47.48 call spread and did so and took in about 27 cents in credit. So I'll go over this one in depth a little bit more. Uh, but generally, the reason that I did this trade, and you can see implied volatility is still very, very high. It's come down from its peak, but still very, very high for OIH. And by doing this, I'm basically trying to even out our distribution on trades for the oil sector. So we've got XLE, and we've got uh, USO, and we've got OIH and XOP. We've got a lot of them. And we need to kind of even things out and get some negative deltas for that particular sector. And this is a good time to bring this up because sometimes, even though your portfolio as a whole might be balanced, you might be kind of lopsided in one sector or another. So maybe tech or solar or uh, social media stocks, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Yelp, etc. And so with oil, we were a little bit too bullish, which has served us well. We've recovered a lot of gains. Uh, and loss of paper losses, we've now kind of whittled those down as oil has rallied. But we don't want to get overzealous that the market in oil is going to continue up like this all the way through November expiration. So we wanted to balance out our oil positions by adding this trade above the market. And you can see that no matter where you add this trade, you can basically place the same probability of success trade on either end. So with OIH, we went all the way out to November options. And you can see that we went ahead and sold about the 30% probability of success level. So that right here is our, our first short strike. It's right about 30% probability of success level. That's where it was today. If you don't want a bearish position in oil, then all you have to do is replicate this exact position down below the market at a very similar strike price. So you can see if you wanted a bullish trade in oil, you go ahead and sell the 43.42 spread below the market. You get a very bullish trade, but it's almost the same probability of success as the trade that we're making today. So again, that's why market direction is pretty meaningless when it comes to just picking a trade. It's much, much more about kind of balancing out your portfolio and your deltas, not being too you know lopsided one way or the other. All right, and then the other trade that we made today is the calendar in CMG. So CMG... Uh, is a trade that I really like because it did have earnings and implied volatility got crushed. It's lower, but it did gap dramatically lower. So CMG has headed lower as its earnings have come about. And so we kind of think that it's going to continue to float just a little bit lower as it heads towards November expiration. So when I actually go to the chart here, uh, the, break, the profit loss chart of CMG, you can see here that, uh, let me take off this simulated trade, you can see here that our profit window for CMG is around 6.10, just over 6.15 to about 5, I'm sorry, to about 5.45 or so. So that's really the range that we need CMG to trade in, a pretty massive range. It's a very expensive trade at about 400 and plus, you know, 450 plus dollars. But you can see with our profit window about 4.40, about 5.48, all the way up to about 6.11 or so gives us a very huge range for CMG to trade. So it's somewhere in this range, all the way up to about 611, very nice wide range, just enough for CMG to continue to move lower as it heads towards November, and possibly as it does head lower, you might see an uptick in implied volatility. So that are all. those are all the trades that we made tonight. As always, if you guys have any comments or questions, please add them below, and we'll get back to those tomorrow before the open. Happy trading.